In the third part of the network security introduction, we'll be looking at information theft or digital theft. When it comes to information theft, there are many different kind of, kinds of information that hackers or attackers can steal. It can be, uh, for example, credit card numbers. It can be login to different uh, systems. Uh, it can be any kind of data that has a value. Um, sometimes the, this information is then used to gain access to bank accounts, which is what I have called digital theft. If that is done, then, you need, then the attacker will also need to do something additional in order to hide what he has actually been doing. So somehow he has to, to get out of the, the traceable transactions. We'll be talking about that on the next slide. Um, often information theft is a result of hacking into larger centralized systems. So it's not just for kids, but it's really advanced persistent threats where you have a specific target that you really want to attack, a, a database that you really want to get into, etc., and then you can work your way into it. There are many well-known cases of this. For example, uh, information about more than 50 million credit card numbers were leaked from uh, Home Depot in 2014. Another example is that um, attackers succeeded in getting into the Danish Register of Social Security Numbers where they got access to almost all Danish social security numbers, which are otherwise considered confidential. Uh, there is a good Danish example on, on digital theft, uh, which was in the news a couple of years ago. Uh, so the names, the names are, are real, at least the Danish names. So Stefan from Denmark is looking for a girlfriend on the internet, and there he meets a uh, Russian Elena Petrova. And they exchange a lot of email, emails. They are very much in love. And at some point, she would, of course, like to come and visit him. But there is a problem because she has no money. But fortunately, she has a rich uncle, which can help. So he can send her the money, but she has no bank account. So instead, the uncle will transfer the money to Stefan, who can then transfer the money to Elena through Western Union. And Western Union is such an, a non-traceable transfer that we discussed about before. So one transferred, so Stefan is waiting for the money to get into his account. And when the money is on his account and he can see it, then he goes to the bank, take out the money and transfer them to Elena. What he doesn't know is that the money are actually stolen from another person, another Danish person, Annette, by theft from her net bank. So what the criminals have done is that they have transferred the money from uh, Annette's account to Stefan's account. That's a traceable transaction. And then Stefan has taken out the money and in this non-traceable transaction transferred them to Elena or who it is that, uh, that is placed in, in Russia. And of course, Stefan never sees his money again. So that is an example of how mules are used. Um, so I will try to go through this, uh, this figure in a bit more detail. So mules are those who take the money from uh, the bank and take them out Take it, take it out in cash, for example, and then go to Western Union or go to somewhere else and do the, the non-traceable transaction. So in the case on the figure here, uh, the mules are hired, so they are paid, but they can also be tricked into it, as was the case with Stefan. Um, then they gain access, then they have their bank accounts, which are genuine, genuine enough. Either they have them already or they establish these bank accounts. Once established um, and in place, then the cyber criminal can breach another account, for example, a Netis account, and then uh, wire transfer these to the, um, to the mule accounts. So that's a completely normal bank transfer. But then the mules will take out the money and do, um, do the transaction. This is step number five in the figure. So the, the mules will take out the money from their bank and, and go in cash and transfer them, for example, through the wire, through the... Um, non-traceable Western Union service. And they then transferred the money to the criminal accounts, where so there is no link between the criminal accounts and then the criminal activity that he did. When we're talking about information theft, I will also mention industrial spionage. Uh, this is a wide area, it's conducted in many ways, and it's also conducted by many different people. So that can be both nation states spying on each other or it can be uh, companies stealing information from each other. So often this is done by hacking into systems, taking advantage of um, security flaws that might be, or it can be an insider 
who is sitting inside their organization and has right to um, to share information with outsiders or at least has the right to access information. It can also be done by installing malware through botnets or social engineering. So the malware is actually the software that is doing the spying. Um, it's my impression that there are many untold stories about industrial spionage because those who are victims don't want to tell about it. But there is a famous example from Nokia some years back um, where, where the criminals managed to get actually several million euros from Nokia. And this money were, were, trans were given to Nokia, handed over to Nokia uh, in a parking lot close to Nokia's head offices. Um, I would also say that industrial espionage is really can be an advanced case of information theft. If you want to know more about the Nokia case, you can Google more and read about it. So this was the end of the third lecture. So now please take quiz number two. Thank you.